Another early Saturday morning in the snow. I just couldn't wait to get going on Project Snowman. So the goal today is going to be to, to swap out all the old U-joints and upgrade them to new spicers. So we've actually got five to do. There's one there, uh, two, three, four, and then five. Those ones are going to be fun tucked under there. But we've got some new goodies to help us out get these old rusty U-joints off of here. And then we're also going to try and swap the, the carrier bearing or the steady bearing, whatever you want to call it. I've never taken one of those apart before, so that's going to be a learning experience. But should be a fun day. Let's see if we can get this done. Relax. All right? My old man is a television repairman. I've got this ultimate set of tools. I can fix it. Okay, so like I was saying, I got the, the five new U-joints there, and then this is a steady bearing. And one, one thing I realized is, from what I've been reading, is you never want to reuse the nut. So you actually got to, when you get the, the drive shaft out of there, there's a nut that holds the yoke on the spline shaft there. So we'll, we'll impact that off, but you don't want to reuse that. So I'm not sure if the, the steady bearing comes with one. If it doesn't, I might have to zip over to one of my favorite parts stores and and pick up a new nut, we'll see. Nope, <laughs> that's all you get, just the assembly. So that's something that we'll need to be able to, to finish this job right, but that's cool. Actually, it's interesting because all these steady bearings that I've seen just doing some research is their, uh, their spline shaft where this is a smooth shaft. Now, according to Kenworth, this is the right part number. So we'll take that apart, maybe this one Will be a little easier to install than I uh, than I thought. So we'll uh, we'll find out later today. So we'll put that back in there. But in order to get these old U joints off of here, I reached out to the Tiger Tool Company, which is a Canadian company, very cool, that uh, that uh, builds these out of uh, Abbotsford, just outside of Vancouver. And these are the only thing that you can use. There's a lot of knockoffs on uh, on Amazon that I've seen that are a lot cheaper but uh, if you read the comments they say they, they break as soon as you apply any torque to them so you want to get the right tool and this is definitely the right tool <laughs> isn't that beautiful so the way it works you put a little bit of oil on the uh, on the threads there and then you just use the impact to pull and you're going to separate the cups and pull it apart I'll, I'll give a demonstration later but but thanks so much to the tiger tool company for uh, for getting me one of these because I really needed it and then the other thing, as I mentioned in a previous video, is I've only got old hand-me-down electric impacts that are kind of old and tired like me. And I reached out to old Milwaukee and they said, no, you're not going to, there's no sponsorship. So I actually broke down and I picked up a new tool. And boy, oh boy, this is the, uh, the three-quarter inch M18 fuel impact. And it supposedly got 1,500 foot-pounds of <laughs> nut-breaking torque, as they say on the box. So this is probably the most expensive tool I've ever bought. But, uh, you know, sometimes you just need to treat yourself. It's nice to have nice things, George. You happy? Yeah. So hopefully this thing works today in combination with the Tiger tool. And we can quickly and easily get all these U-joints out of here. So I'm excited to give this a try. Obviously, I'm uh, working on snowman i still got lbl to do i gotta take the steering box off and then of course i got iron duke coming so i'm sure we're going to put this uh this milwaukee impact through its paces so hopefully it works good for us all right let's talk more work now, one thing that's nice is the fact that there's no brakes on the truck right now so when it's in neutral i can actually turn it and get access to all of these without having to crawl under the truck okay Let's try out this fancy impact. So we'll get all the cover plates off of here. Oh yeah, that's got power. 
That is nice. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't even blink with these little 9 16 bolts. And the added benefit is I don't have to have the air compressor going to wake up my wife or the neighbors with my early morning starts here. Now you want to make sure you take the time and care because everything's kind of worn in phase and you want to put it all back together the same way. Not really in phase, but it's kind of the parts have all worn together and if you didn't have any vibration before, you kind of want to put it back in that same configuration. You know, I mean, you can see there's weights on here. So if you had it 180 degrees out, it would, uh, you might get a vibration in the drive line. So one of the ways to do that quick and easy is just to paint or do a mark. But I just, I just like paint because I can paint black over it again. And then that way I'll be able to easily match it up on uh, on where it goes and I won't get it out of phase so quick trick there but you don't want to make sure that you you mark it out and uh, and put it back together the same way you took it apart you want to make sure that you got a lot of oil on the threads and the one I borrowed from traction when I did this on the peat was a well-worn tool so it was just coated in oil but uh, but this one of course is brand new and we don't want to gall up any threads or, or wreck anything so she's all lubed up and ready to go Okay, so as you can see, it just tightens the, it just tightens this, these threads up and raises this up and pushes it apart. So we'll see how easy this is gonna, this is gonna work. Oh, like a charm! Look how easy that works. Looks pressed up. Oh, that's the way to do it. The right tool for the job. Oh yeah, those aren't nearly as seized as the ones on the peat. They actually came apart pretty easily. So again, kudos to the uh, to the fellows that owned this truck before. You guys obviously did good maintenance on this and probably used anti-seize on the caps. But you get the idea how that tool works. Ugh. I was actually watching the old video the way I did this on the peat over breakfast <laughs> and I noticed I was using a claw hammer because I had pretty limited tools when I when I started working these projects so at least now I'm using a proper hammer so I won't get thrashed in the comments I guess you get better with age now now Guess maybe I'll use the, the tool again and give that guy a push because I don't think it's quite got it out yet. Out the cap came, plopped out on the ground. Yeah, that is the right way to take these things apart. Oh, that one took a little monkeying around to finally get all four caps out, but again, I'm just uh, still learning how to use the tool, what to do and what not to do, but 
what ended up happening was I had it too far down, so I couldn't get the tool under the yoke ear here. So that's why I was monkeying around to try and get it high enough to where I could get the tool on there and push that last cap out. So, okay, we got those four done. That was definitely the easiest one because I can stand around it. The ones like that, I'm gonna have to be laying on my back in the gravel and snow. And then I'm really worried about those ones back there. They were a hell of a job on the peak, but I guess we'll keep moving forward and get the next easiest one off back here. Well, I asked. <laughs> still smoking so i guess that's the trick just throw some heat to it now of course this little uh plumber's torch is is not really enough I, i've got to invest in an oxyacetylene i've got the uh the torches i just got to get some tanks that'll help me so much on these old rusty trucks but that's the way just give her a little bit of heat and then just put the power to that uh that m18 and that old tiger tool pulls it off so Okay, two down, three to go. Let's get this drive shaft out of here. can get well maybe I'll crawl under and try and get that U joint out and then we can try and take this uh this guy apart oh fun fun now I'm used to seeing the the yoke nut the having uh it not having a cotter pin through it so I wonder if this is a different style so what we'll do is we'll I might be able to actually reuse this. What I can do is maybe just load it up with Loctite. And then of course it's got the cotter pin in there to, to hold it in place. So we'll zip this guy off and see if we can uh, convince that yoke to come off of there. Well, that's the thing with these big trucks is you're really gonna test your uh, tool collection unless you're a heavy duty mechanic. So I know these aren't impact sockets, but they're the only big ones I had. I was gonna use them, but the two is just a little too small. And the only other size I have is two and a quarter, and that's too big. So that size is obviously somewhere in between. And I hate like hell stop and work to go get more tools, but I think uh, I think I'm going to be dead in the water until I get that right socket. But at least I guess one benefit is is we can get the uh, the right size with an impact socket so it doesn't explode on us. And then maybe I can buy a new nut as well. So uh, off the traction. So this is stop number four. Boy, oh boy, I'm wasting a beautiful Saturday parking around looking for this stupid two and an eighth socket. So we'll see if, if Princess has it. We've already tried traction, fleet, Fort Gary. Fingers crossed. Where's sockets? Oh yes, two and an eighth. It's chrome, but it'll do. We'll get that off of there yet. I figure while we're here, we might as well get a, a puller as well to not only pull the yoke off, but potentially pull out that uh, that steady bearing off the spline shaft. Power fist makes the best stuff. <laughs> not. Oh, 28 bucks each. 
the guy was building a shop he should almost get a dozen of these all right that was the score at least we got what we need hopefully that's the right size well, let's get back to work oh what a lovely day it's actually above zero this time of year is very unusual hey dicaprio global warming <laughs> no i think it's a warm front it's supposed to get really cold next week all right let's see if i got the right socket oh yeah that's gonna work just nice okay let's see if we can uh zip this off of here actually come off by hand oh what a treat yeah and someone must have really used anti-seize that is such a treat and such a surprise yeah I think I can see the anti-seize on the splines there so thank you to whoever did that it just saved me an hour of work okay well I think what I'll do is I'll leave this supported and then start going under there to, to tackle that guy. And then we can pull the drive shaft out of there and then just lower this by itself. Okay, making progress now. Wow, did that ever make quick work of that? I think as long as you have something over top, like a cab or, a, or the uh, sleeper, the U-joints are much easier to get off of there. I mean, that tool just worked like butter with that impact. So that's the way to do that. And yeah, the hardest one so far has been that one that's kind of, like I say, more exposed to the elements. So maybe that's why it got a little more rusty and seized. But boy, I'm so impressed with how easy that was to to get that out of there. Five minutes and it's done. I left the JP shop at a quarter to five. I forgot I was over on my drive. I got to the scales at half past nine. <laughs> I doubt this is gonna come off by hand. Uh, but we can get the, the rubber part off. Uh, and there's the bearing. Okay. Uh, Yeah, I'm glad I bought that puller. We can put the power fist deal to, to good use and try and get that guy off of there. So now you see why it makes sense to, once you start restoring one truck, you wanna restore another and then another because you start to build up a tool collection and a, and a bit of knowledge. And what, what's the point of having all this stuff if, you, if you're not gonna put it to good use on another, on another project? Okay, hopefully this works. I'm thinking it will. Something like, like that. Okay. I might have to put the, uh, adjust where the fingers are, but we'll see. I mean, if I back this guy out enough, it'll be enough to grab. Oh, that slinger's right in the way. wonder if we can do it just on that little lip. I don't know if it'll be enough to grab. It'd be nice to be behind it. Yeah. Damn. Well, I guess I could bend the, uh, the slinger a bit.
Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> I just turned it by hand and it came off. All right, well, I guess we probably didn't need that. Oh, God. Well, would you look at that? Came off without any trouble and it is smooth. So it just goes right on that shoulder. So we'll put some anti-seize on there and we'll bend these guys back. And I think this steady bearing is gonna be one of the easiest things I've done on this truck yet. On the way out the till, I saw these, the grease monkey gloves, so I thought, why not grab a pair? Just forgot to put them on. <laughs> All right. Hello, doctor. Okay, so let's put the, uh, put the user in there. To the right size. Now I usually like to put these guys, the Zerks forward. So we'll do that. That's not the right size. That's not even close. Shit. You guys sold me the wrong ones. Damn. Huh. Not even close. Swing and a miss, boys. Swing and a miss. And they are now closed. So I think we are not going to get to assemble this today. Of course, I ripped the box, which they're not going to be happy about. But how the hell did that happen? I used the part number from Kenworth, and they cross-referenced it. So I wonder if they're all the same, or maybe we just got one that was. Five twenty one, five two eighty one X. Ah, they're the same. <sighs> well, you win some, you lose some, I guess. Back to Fort Gary on uh, in the new week. Oh, that is a bummer. Well, I guess we'll finish taking it apart, and then we can clean everything up, and then I guess uh, we'll have to postpone putting them all back in until we get the right size. Sorry, folks. Well, just wait. We may be able to at least finish this front drive shaft. Okay, we know this guy's wrong, and I'll have to tape that up and just say my dog to the box. Now, I had bought U-joints for uh, for the first short drive shaft between the six-speed and the four-speed, and I haven't uh, I haven't made that uh, haven't swapped them out yet. Uh, and it's still on the to-do list for little by little. So I just realized I've got these sitting in the shop and we may be able to, uh, that's a 79 Pete and it's a 79 Kenworth. So we'll see if it's the right size. We might get lucky. 5-280X, that is the part number I needed. So. <laughs> see what I'm talking about with having multiple trucks to restore? You start to end up having parts that you can uh, that you can use on your other projects. Six four eight. Yeah, that is going to that is going to work. Six forty eight. That's a little different of a part number, but I'm pretty sure that was the part number that the boys at Kenworth gave me. So yeah, that looks a little. That looks a little closer. 
Okay, I'm just gonna double check the info and make sure that these are the right ones. But if they are, then at least we can mount this uh, the short front drive shaft with the steady bearing. So yeah, cool. So if you can see, there's just a whole bunch of needle rollers in there and you wanna make sure that those all stay in place because if one goes out or goes sideways on your flat, that's gonna be trouble. This thing's gonna fail prematurely. So they come with a little bit of grease in there, but there's always a, it's always a good idea to put a little more. Not only does it kind of give, it pre-greases them, but it also helps to hold them in place. So I like to put a little smear in there of all four, since I've already got grease on my finger. I still can't believe that me being uh, procrastinating or being lazy on doing the short drive shaft on little by little helps save this project so at least we can get this drive shaft in today. I guess eventually Twin Stick Garage I'll have a whole I'll have a whole bunch of parts for all these different trucks. Okay so next what you want to do is something that your future self will thank you for and in this case we're going to put uh, some anti-seas inside the journals here because it will help make removal easier down the road. Okay. Some is good, more is better. Okay, so now, well, now I want to do this. I like using the, uh, putting the, uh, the Zerks forward. But now I kind of screwed myself because I don't want to get anti-seize on the, on that portion. And essentially you just make sure all your needles are, are pointed down and you slowly wiggle this in place. And sometimes it needs a little gentle persuasion. There, something like that. And then these nuts already have a little bit of thread locker on there. And I looked at the spec and it calls for, I think 38 to 48. So maybe we'll, we'll set it in the low 40s and we can torque these guys up. That's basically it on this. Now, there was a fellow on YouTube, he had a pretty good trick. And I think I might try and do that, where he took, he took uh, bolts that were the same thread as this and hacked off the heads and put them down as studs. So when you push the cap on, it lines it up straight and you don't have to monkey around like I was just doing to get these bolts in. Finger tight should be good enough to hold it, to spin it around. Right, did I get any anti-seize on there? A little bit of dirt. That shouldn't be too bad. Okay. Put the other cap on. Always double check to make sure your needles are in place. You don't want those to fall. Probably a little overkill, but that's okay. In this case, I just use the bolts to bring the cap down as opposed to smacking it with a hammer. Just smoother. Bring it down nice and straight. guys down below because obviously when we get it into place 
that's when the uh, the caps will go on. I've still got to clean up the uh, the yoke as well. I'll leave those down there for later. <clears throat> And then we'll spin this around and we'll mount that steady burn. Okay. Now I'm thinking a little bit of anti seize on here couldn't hurt. I don't want to give too much though, I don't want to have this thing spinning on the shaft. Just a thin layer, I'm thinking. That makes sense. There, like that. <clears throat> okay, so I think this thing just, just slides on like so. Oh, yeah. That almost seems too simple. Okay. I think this is ready to go uh, to go back into place. See, now that I marked it with the blue, I know that it goes this way. <clears throat> and again, that's the blue paint is to make sure that your your multiple drive shafts, especially these two here, stay in uh, in phase, and you don't get them changed between one another. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I swear I need a helper here. One zan's in. And now, at least I got the exhaust pipe there to hold it. So, these are the bolts that hold the, the carrier bearing in place. And you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to reuse nylon Bolt. So what we'll do is we'll, I don't think I have this, this size, so we'll get sort of this class. So I'll just tack it in place and I can always change the, the bolt later. Okay, at least that's held now. And now we can go underneath and finish up that U-joint, put those other two caps on. Put uh, that yoke back on. So we'll put on we'll put on some uh, anti seize on these splines. In case we ever want to take it off again. Something like that. Okay. Starting to run out of daylight here. Okay, now, check our orientation. Yeah, where's our blue paint? Get that turn. Just like that. Okay, now, there's our paint on this guy. There's our paint there. So, Yeah, that's the way that goes for the paint. And so it's basically straight up into the blue. Now again, I need to get new bolts with new uh, nylon lock nuts, but at least we can uh, we can zip this guy back on. I think standard torque on these is about 400 foot pounds, so we'll zip this up real good. Now this one, I got locked tight in the threads, and it does have the cotter pin to go through it, so I'm not as worried about this one backing off. But we'll still zip it up.
So we'll get a cotter pin and put that through. And I think we're just about gonna call it a day. Can't do much more now anyway, until we get the correct U-joints. Oh, sometimes I'm just not that bright. Homer, you're dumb as a mule and twice as ugly. Never said I was a professional, folks. So I was actually editing the video and I realized that, I don't know if you can see it, I used the paint to try and line up this yoke, but then I also, looking at the video, didn't realize that you also need to line it up to the drive shaft. So if I put the drive shaft where it's got the fixed yoke at the far end, straight at 12 o'clock, like so, this guy is off one. So I was off one, uh, one tooth on the splines. So I got to back the nut off, pull the yoke off and clock it over one more. So you always want to make sure your yokes are in alignment or you're going to have just a wicked, wicked vibration. So hopefully this comes off of here, not too bad. folks like I always say and I never said I was a professional oh, okay there thank goodness okay so straight up at 12 o'clock and we're gonna clock this guy one more over something like that <laughs> okay easy fix but hopefully that gives a gives a pretty good sense of what's involved in removing U joints and how well the the old tiger tool works when you have a really good impact to go along with it so with that we'll call her a day still a long way to go but we'll get there <laughs>